Hi guys, PJ here. Today I'm working on a 2008 uh, Peugeot 207 and I'm going to be showing you how to remove the factory fitted radio and put in something like a double din radio. So double the size radio such as this where obviously it's a lot wider than the original one that sits here. Quite an easy thing to do on the Peugeot. It's not going to take you very long at all which is the good news. Um, useful sort of tools to use I would say. Release keys for the radio, this type, these are normal keys, you can buy these in most car shops, etc. or eBay, normally about a pound. Some snips, um, hacksaw blade, probably the most important thing, or something sharp to cut plastic with. Roll of electrical tape always useful, bullet connectors, that type of thing. Um, what I normally do is cover, as you can see, the gear knob and the lower area of plastics, because if you're resting anything on it, you quite easily get scratched, you don't want that. So... Before we just go on to the main guide, I just need to say that um, by following this video guide, I'm held no way liable or responsible for any injury to yourself or damage to your vehicle. First things first, get your release keys and pop them in the little holes. I'm sorry about the darkness level here, guys. It's just that it's very, very early in the morning here in the UK and being in the middle of winter, in fact, straight after Christmas, it's, uh, well, very short days, I'll put it that way, so it's very dark still. Right, so basically pop them both in until you feel them click, and then what you're going to do is push them away from each other. So you're going to, you need both hands, so just pull them apart and pull at the same time to pull the radio. Now would be a good time to press eject to make sure you haven't got a CD in there, because if you have, it's going to be in there for a while, isn't it? Well, unless you take the radio apart to get it out or plug it back in again. So eject your CD, put that safe, um, and basically pull them apart and release the radio. As if by magic, a video editing, in other words, yes, I need both hands to do that. Pull the radio forward, like I say, you can see it's all steel, so obviously you don't want to scratch anything with that. On the back here, you have a FACRA aerial connection. Now, on the bottom of this is a squeezy tab, which can I do one handed? That is a question. You'd think after all these years of doing videos, I would be able to do these one handed, but no, it's got me. Moving on to this, I'll do that one in a minute. There's a clip underneath, there you go. Rotary clip with a squeeze tab. Squeeze the bottom of it, it says, and rotate. So we've squeezed the back, rotate, there we go. There's the tab, yeah, so squeeze this piece here down, look, it's on a squeezy, squeezy tab, and rotate it, so it's on like a, an angle. So you rotate it up and then pull out. Okay, and then you've got, like I say, your FACRA connector, which is here, and that's got a squeezy tab there. Oh, there we go, off it comes. Simple as that. Put that safely out of the way. Like I say, it's a big old heavy thing made of steel, so keep it away from any of your trim. Next up, you have a pocket here, like a plastic pocket. What you can do with this is put your hand in and behind. I've got a bit of light on this for you so I can show you more what I'm all about. There we go. So you can put your hand right in and get behind it. So if I can balance the camera and torch. There we go. Go right behind it and pop. Oop, that won't come out rather easily. They don't normally come out that easily. That's been out before. Leaves you a nice big area. Now, your area is big enough for a double din stereo without any extra fitting kits. Okay, so you don't need any of the cages. You only need what comes with the radio. However, you may notice plastic here and plastic here. So what we're going to do with those two chunks of plastic, you guessed it, it's hacksaw blade time. So we're going to basically cut them off, yeah, both sides and make them flush. Just take your time when actually cutting them because when you get down to the, let me get some light on it again for you, sorry guys. Like I say, it's really dark at this time of morning. There we go. When you get down to the bottom, you don't want your hacksaw blade to go all the way through and then hit the trim below, put a scratch on it. So just make sure that it's, um, you know, covered or that you've got complete control of your hacksaw blade. So you don't want to hack anything away. Likewise, always make sure you're holding the piece of plastic with your other thing, with your other hand, because otherwise it's going to fall off and tumble down the back into the abyss down there, rattle around forever and probably get on your nerves. So just hold on to it when you're on the last thread of it. And there we go. We have two clean cuts, one there, 
and one there and you are left with a couple of bits of plastic that look like that yes you guessed it i'm only showing one because the other one has tumbled down into the abyss down here somewhere so i've got to try and retrieve that otherwise it's going to rattle around and really annoy the owner of the vehicle so from this stage we can start unboxing the new radio so here's the new radio complete with mounting cage that comes with it so like i say you don't need any extra ones that mounting cage is the correct size for your newly shaped hole as you can see it goes straight in there not a problem don't pop it in just yet because a lot of radios including this pioneer 200 that i've got here have extra cables we have a usb cable to plug into the back of it probably going to route that to the glove box so we're going to route it through show you when i've done that bit and also a microphone to plug in it's a lot easier to run these cables when there's nothing in the way um, and there's my extra light just gone off sorry about that um, yeah it's a lot easier to run them because obviously you can get your arm in and down so what we're going to do with those two cables is thread them through a uh, quick tip i normally tie the microphone jack plug end around the gear knob because then when you thread it through and you drop it through into your foot well here you're not going to accidentally pull the cable all the way through the dashboard it's not going to go anywhere is it little tip always do it very handy so we're going to put our cables through here they're down under the glove box as like a, a a sort of sound padding material underneath here we're going to tuck it up under there cable tied up out of the way and then up, up the edge of the dash and mount it near the interior mirror the microphone now accessories to get this radio fitted you are going to need an aerial adapter such as this this is made by connects 2 and as you can see, it's CT27AA14. And that is an aerial adapter that simply plugs into the FACRA connection of the car and converts it to normal, normal aerial. So it plugs into your new radio. But you will notice that, where's it got? Here we go. That connector does not plug into that aerial hole. And that's what this does. Converts it, so it does. Simple plug and play. And we also have a wiring harness adapter because this quad lock, as it is called, does not plug into where's it gone? this that comes with the radio. This is ISO. So we need this, a conversion wire. This is a CT20PEO2 and it does the job for you. Very nice and straightforward. So we're going to run all our uh, extra wires and everything and then we'll sort of skip the video to when I've finished that because obviously you don't need to see me running the cables under the dashboard that's quite easy to do really quick tip these are the clips that hold the sound padding on underneath your glove box okay and the way to remove them because they're pushed up into the sound padding and all you do is pop out the center see the center there when they're actually in they're pushed up like that which spreads them out so all you do is get something behind them or even your fingernail to be honest and just pull it and then the clip will fall out on the floor there's three of them in total try not to lose them because otherwise your sand padding's all loose and baggy when you try and put it back again once you've done that once you've got them all out just pop that one on the floor you are left with there there's your sand padding lot with its holes from where the clips came from one there one there and then one on the other end that i've still to remove gives you nice access also to the fuse box of the vehicle which is behind the glove box so basically you drop the glove box door down pull the panel off and there's the fuse box look so you can run your cables nicely under there out of the way another quick tip if you're trying to run your usb cable if your radio comes with one and like the owner of this vehicle you want it coming out here in the center console so you in other words take a plug phone or whatever into it to charge um you're going to need to get your cable down there so Basically, tape the correct end to some sort of uh, tubing or, I don't know, soldering cable, thick soldering cable, or maybe a cable tie. I've got some fiberglass rods here. You can buy these off, again, eBay, Amazon, that type of place. So sticky tape it on, tuck it up there, because what we're going to do is end up with this piece, the other end, if you like, sort of here. And then we're going to pull, the, pull this away and pop it out under here. So we've got our rods that it's sellotaped to. There you go. And there's your end ready to put in your radio. Yeah. And then the other end, like I was saying, this end, there's your centre console. I'm going to tuck up, which is a lot easier with two hands, believe me. There we go. Tuck that up there. 
come around the other side. This centre console piece here just pulls up. So if you grab it near near the edge, you can just click it and it will actually pull up. And then you should be able to put your hand in and reach in and need both hands, like I say, and pull your USB cable up. There we go. USB, like I say, it'll tuck back there out of the way. We can just sort of push it against where this clicks in. So it'll click in and that'll just sit there. Three or four inches worth of cable on its slack. The rest of the spare cable here we can tuck up underneath the centre console and that's that cable then routed and finished. Like so. Coming out of the corner at the back there. Torch. There we go. Nice and click back in. When you put your centre console piece back in, you click it this end first and then down for the rear end. That's your USB cable, like I was just saying, all finished up. I just thought I'd show you where it was coming out and you know everything does click together nicely again. Factory finish as it were. On with the microphone. Right guys, our microphone is run. Like I say, there's my jack plug ready to go in the back of the radio. The actual microphone itself is up near the mirror, uh, right in the middle of the vehicle. And we went across the bottom of the glove box, like I was saying. Next up, you're on to the cable that comes with the radio. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is there's a couple of wires in particular that you need to pay attention to. One is this blue wire, which is linked to the aerial adapter that I'll show you shortly. And two is this one. Now, this long green wire here, if yours is a screen, this will only happen if your double din radio has a screen on it. Okay, if it's a double din radio without a screen, you will not have this cable and do not need to listen to this bit of the video. If you do, this cable, as per the instruction manual of the radio, needs to connect to the earthing switch on the bottom of the handbrake. That's why it's long, so you can run it all the way down the centre console to your own brake, take your centre console out and get to the earthing switch. There's a switch on the bottom, has a, basically like a bullet connector pushed on it, and you need to crimp this to that cable. Okay, this is so obviously you cannot drive around with the screen on, so you can't play a DVD or whatever or whatever whilst driving along. Now, without stating the obvious, you would have to be a complete idiot to want a screen on while driving around. A, not only will you get in trouble with the police, B, you'll probably cause an accident and could seriously harm life. So, what I'm going to tell you now is what most people ask to be done when this is being fitted and this particular person has asked for this to be done. If, however, you're something like, I don't know, a taxi driver or whatever, and you want the screen to play while your engine's running so you've got your heater on, yeah, um, I mean, really, you'd have your handbrake on, but hey-ho, people do ask this. How to get round this so you don't have to connect it to your handbrake, okay? Certain vehicles don't have the switched earth on the handbrake, so this is how you get round it. It's very simple to do. All we're going to do is snip the wire, quite literally, about there, yeah, get rid of all the excess. And then the earth cable, the black cable, I'm going to snip that and we're going to join them all together. So it, it basically earths out the handbrake switch on the earthing cable to the radio. That bypasses the problem and lets you use the screen as you wish. Now, like I say, you know, obviously if you drive around with this on, you're either an idiot or you're going to get in trouble with the police and you deserve it. So don't drive around watching the screen you know, safety and all that. But if you want to bypass it, this is the way. So we connect that to that. So there we go, there's your earth and your handbrake cable connected on a bullet connector to the earth. Uh, one quick thing, if you are running this and thinking, you know, if you get pulled over, you're gonna turn around to the police and say, well, my passenger was watching the screen, that ain't gonna wash. Okay, I've heard that said a few times and we do deal with the police quite a lot and that won't wash they will still have you for driving without due care and attention so there's your fair warnings right the other cable that I've quickly done is the aerial adapter yeah so on one end is this the FACRA to go into the car the other end is this to go into your radio and it has a blue trail wire coming off it with a filter attached yeah there's your filter there we go crimped it in to the blue wire that comes out the back of your radio this one's blue with a white stripe but you'll have a blue wire or blue with a white stripe. And basically it's an output, antenna output to work electric aerials or the filters on this type of thing. That's all now ready. We're gonna loom all this up so it's all nice and tight, okay? There's one extra wire to do on a Peugeot. If you're on a different model of car, you probably won't have to do this, but Peugeot and Citroen you do. So we're gonna loom all that up and get to that part. Right, this is your wiring adapter that was in the little box that I showed you earlier. And this has got the FACRA connection on one end, uh, not FACRA, sorry, quad lock connection on one end. 
and the normal ISOs on the other to go with the wire I've just shown you. Okay, they're all plugged together. You'll also notice a red wire that comes off and is loose. This needs to be connected to an ignition switched live at the fuse box. Quite simple to do. All we're going to do, obviously pop it through the hole and then down out through the bottom like the other cables and across to the fuse box, which is located just here behind the glove box lid. Now with this kit, or this particular kit, I'm using a fuse spur. This saves any soldering or wire chopping or anything like that. Fuse spurs are normally about a pound, two pound off eBay, Amazon, that type of place. And this is a mini blade fuse spur. Do not get confused, there are micro and normal ones. This is mini blade, Peugeot's a mini blade. We've got a 10 amp fuse here. This will run the radio. And the gap here, yeah, you guessed it. That's where you put the fuse that you pull out of your fuse box once you've assessed which one is an accessory ignition switched fuse. Okay, so we're going to test the fuse box to see which ones go on and off with the car ignition. Now, you don't use anything important, you know, look like airbags or ECU or ABS or anything like that. We've got something that's accessory. Okay, you can look in your user's manual for accessory. Normally, cigarette light or power seats, that type of thing. You must go on and off with the ignition. And what we're going to do is pull that fuse out and pop it in here and then shove this in the fuse box. Okay, so it doubles up the socket, gives you a nice fly-off cable to connect to your red cable here. Right then guys, we're at the fuse box of the vehicle. Now normally, you know, you would test these with a multimeter or you would use one of those little screwdrivers with a bulb in the end that light up. And all you would do is tap the probe on the end of the fuse, yeah? So see if it's on and off with the ignition. So obviously you turn your ignition off, do a test. If your little light doesn't light up or your multimeter registers zero, you know that circuit's dead. And then you turn the ignition on and obviously your screwdriver should either light up or your multimeter should show 12 volts just by touching on the end of the fuse. However, I've done hundreds and hundreds of these Peugeots over the years and know for a fact that the two five amp fuses there, the brown ones, are both ignition switched and we can safely Go ahead and, oh, my torch has moved, that's difficult to take the torch back, there we go. Go ahead and pull one of those out, there we go, we'll go for the far left one. There we go. There, so we've pulled the far left one out, so what, one, two, three from the end, so we've got a blue 15, then a 10, and then a 5. So we've pulled that out, there's the fuse, there we go, that goes in the end of the fuse spur, which we've now connected to the red wire to the adapter, so that one, that'll go in there, yeah, pop that in, like so, so this power wire connects to, like I say, that one, it goes all the way through, comes out here, and it goes to your adapter, yeah, and then we plug this back in where that fuse came from, like so, like that, nice and simple, that's your ignition switch power done, now go ahead and click your adapter into your main harness, which again is very difficult one-handed. I bet I can't do it. No, I never can. Not on these. Anyway, you click those together, like so. Shove the lock bar over to click and lock it together. We've taped it up so it's nice and neat and also plugged in our FACRA aerial adapter, like so. Then you've got the cable that comes with the actual radio itself, which, yep, it daisy chains. It plugs onto those two, so plug those together. Once all clicked together, you can tuck everything down out of the way, just leaving the wires coming out that you need. Don't forget your microphone cable, you don't want to get that trapped. So that's everything. They're all tucked down the back of the heater. You can now get your cage and get that slotted in. Once slotted in, you simply twist on a couple of these each side, like so. Just to secure it, hold it in place, you don't have to go mad, a few will do, there we go. And then obviously we're going to plug the stereo in. There's everything plugged in the back of the stereo, make sure they're all nice and tight, very easy to pull out when you're shoving the stereo back, make sure everything's tucked out of the way and obviously slide the stereo in place. Do not lock it yet. The stereo slid in place, not locked in, as I just said, you can test it. Turn your ignition on and there we go, radio comes on as you would expect. Now, at this point, turn your ignition back off and obviously lock your radio in place. Shove it back until it clicks and that'll be that. That is your radio installed and finished. So if you've managed to get to this stage, well done. Nice one. 
If this guide was any help at all, please give me a thumbs up. Any questions, pop them in the comments. I do my best to answer them as quickly as I can, but I get inundated with questions every single day, so just bear with me on that one. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye for now.